Childhood of Jesus, Chapter 196 A new king over all the world. In the course of this second game, still other dissensions arose among the players. The prime minister was too greatly feared, because Cyrenius held that office so as a general as well as a governor, and the judge hardly dared to undertake anything against the prime minister and privately sulked at such an arrangement. Especially the two girls who held the offices of prefect and judge were not satisfied because they were not permitted to do anything without the permission of the prime minister. Only Sixtus in his children's pit was wholly satisfied. The little child saw this discord, hence he called them all together again, handed out the marbles once more and had them toss for the third time. At this toss, Cyrenius landed in the king's pit, and the little child in the children's pit, and all the children were highly pleased that for once the two years and four months old Jesus also landed in the children's pit. Here even that certain girl returned and said to the little child, See, that is a proper place for you. It makes me happy that for once you also landed in this boring little pit. The little child replied, See, the Prime Minister's pit is still free. Take a marble and toss. Perhaps you will land in it. Thereupon the girl took the marble again, tossed and actually landed in the Prime Minister's pit. And when she saw herself in the pit of the Prime Minister, she turned quite red for joy that her ambition had finally been satisfied, and jokingly remarked, Well, my Jesus, look out, now I shall surely punish you if you are disobedient. Here the little child said, You know the children are free from the law. How will you treat me, and what will you do to me? And the girl replied, Just let the game begin, and you shall promptly see whether the Prime Minister has no power over the children. Then Cyrenius, as king, allotted the game, and all went to their places and there administered their office. But the Prime Minister especially incited the priest against the child, that he should not in any case give him a hearing. Thus all the other officers also had no ear for the child, and the child therefore ran to the king and complained to him accordingly to the rule of the game over his persecution. But the king answered, O oh Lord, I am still not familiar enough with these rules. But since, notwithstanding these rules, a disorder has again crept into the game, I will recall the little company once more, and if you wish, we can make a new toss right away. And the little child declared, Yes, Cyrenius, a new one, and forever the last one. So then call the children together, that we may make the final throw. Cyrenius now called the children together, distributed the marbles, and all tossed. This time all the children, as well as Cyrenius, tossed into the children's pit. Only Jesus tossed into the king's pit. At this his pit at once began to glow, and his marble began to shine like the sun. And the little child took the shining marble, laid it into the father's pit, and then asked Cyrenius, Cyrenius, now do you understand something of this significant game? Cyrenius answered, O oh Lord, my life, how should I be able to understand that? And the little child replied, Then listen to me. I shall interpret it for all of you plainly and thoroughly. Chapter 197 The Little Child Interprets the Game And the little child immediately began to speak like a wise teacher in a synagogue and said, Now this is the meaning of this game. From the beginning of creation, as well as before it, God was the Lord from eternity. The first task signifies the ancients recognize the freedom of their spirit, but do not want to give the glory to God, and the game gets out of order. This game lasts from Adam to Noah, and from Noah to Moses. The contrary girl represents love to God as well as to the world, which rejects love. 
In Noah's day, mankind is judged by what amounts to a threat, as this girl was chastised with mice. But mankind does not improve and gradually falls into idolatry and wants altars, a visible deity and much ceremony. Here the Lord calls for an end to the game during the leadership of Moses and a second throw takes place. In the beginning it seems as if this time it would endure, but just as soon as Moses turns his back the golden calf is fashioned. Thus the girl begins to quarrel all the more, for which she is earnestly rebuked with the threat of actual judgment. Hence the flood was actually more of a very strong threat than an actual judgment. But the judgment of the people in the desert was an actual judgment, since it was done by fire as once at Sodom. With that throw the new game begins. At first matters go well, but only out of fear. For this game is lacking in love, represented by the mother who withdrew because she was not permitted to rule. This mosaic game lasted until this time and destroyed itself by all manner of revolts and through constant fear. Again the Lord calls the little flock together. The toss is made and the Lord becomes a child. Here love comes and expresses a certain joy at the important state of the Lord. Love now tosses also, and succeeds in attaining to the first step of the throne, and there she persecutes the Lord unto death, and leaves him no rest for over one thousand and about nine hundred years, and incites everything against him. By that time the established powers themselves realize that this state of affairs cannot endure, and the final throw is made. The Lord again becomes the only Lord as of old. His rule is filled with burning zeal, and his throw is marked by the fullness of his grace, and all the people will recognize the Father from the children's place when he as such approaches closer and closer to the people with all the power of his love, and that will be the final throw, and no other will take place evermore. For then the Father will be the Father eternally. See, that is the interpretation of this game. Now let us go back into the house to see what the reawakened Talia is doing. So follow me, all of you.